we've now had, I don't know what, 12 hours to let Not it marinate a little more than that. Lindholm, six years as a flame, he is gone. I was thinking back that, you know, the trade tree that they do. So Lindholm, part of the Dougie Hamilton deal, yep. part of the Boston trade yep. with the first round. I mean, it's... First two seconds, Dougie. It, it's going to continue on here. You could rewind it back even further. Lindholm drafted by Jim Rutherford. Yeah, yeah. And so the the fingerprints are on it. I this And I feel like this isn't even a, a Calgary Bay show pumping the Flames, how well they did on a trade. I said it in the last segment, I don't think they could have done better if they waited. I don't think a team was going to pay more than two nope. picks and two prospects and a, and a player. And yes. You is, heard Craig is, Conroy say it. I got my price. Is Kuzmenko there the top prospect in Vancouver? No, he's not. But you're also not trading an elite star player. You're, you're trading a very good player mm -hmm. who's an expiring contract in a bad season with no yep. salary retention. I think... For, for what it is, this is a this is a fine deal. I think the most exciting part for the Flames is that they got the best of both worlds. Like, we talked about this the last few weeks, that they need to get some NHL-ready pieces and players because they're not tearing it down to the studs. They want to – this is not a full-scale rebuild. They want to have guys that they can plug in that could help get them where they want to get to. And Kuzmenko could be that guy. And, and frankly, I would make the argument it's in their best interest to help make him sure, that yeah, guy yeah. than to just turn around and flip him over the next five weeks. Or next year where he's a U next summer. Uh, to give us more on him because the, the, the prospects are fun. The first rounder is nice. It'll be a late pick. But, like, he's a late arrived to the NHL guy, 39 as a rookie. What, what more context can you give us on him? Last year was magical. He steps in, plays with Pedersen, 39 goals. 74 points and you're like where'd this guy come from and it's so rare to have someone step in like there's all those they call them equivalency charts hey if you play in the khl and you get this well that roughly translates to this in the nhl he blew that out of the water yeah and then this year they make the coaching change late last year and he just can't he can't fit square peg and round hole yeah. and for me you know i think one of the real, and this is not a knock on Rick Tockett, who I think has done an unbelievable job in Vancouver. Sometimes teams spend so much time focusing on what players don't do well that they lose sight of what makes them really valuable. And that, to me, you have to be willing to take the, the bad with the good. And Kuzmenko has tons of talent that you guys talked about Sharon Govich to open the show. I think part of what the Flames have done really well here since Craig Conroy took over is identify some market inefficiencies. Fine. Look, Kuzmenko had to be part of some deal. But I, I would assure you that their interest in moving Lindholm to Vancouver again, another divisional rival, part of their calculus was not many other teams that are going to be in this mix are willing to pluck a player off of their roster to send us back that has any of the upside anywhere near Kuzmenko. So I don't want to say he was the centerpiece of the deal, but I think he was a huge part of what Calgary was thinking in terms of how they arrived at the finish line. It's a potential home, it's a potential home run. It's a bit of a wild card. The right? whole thing's a wild card. You, mm -hmm. you, I guess when you come into a trade, you want pick, player, process, that, that sort of thing. I think Kuzmenko has a bit of bust boom to it yep. for the Flames, right? He maybe he leaves, maybe you trade him, maybe you look back. So, well, he never did reach the heights of that one year that he had in Vancouver. But how many but players your, even have that yeah, upside? And no you one need to have that roster. ability to do it yeah. in the first place. What did we talk about the other day on Monday? We said the Flames have a clear lack of talent compared yes. to those other teams. Yeah. Kuzmenko, he's not the end-all, be-all, but he adds just a bit more to the talent pool that you didn't have. He does the thing they struggle the most at, and that's score. They, they don't have scorers, uh, and he just casually rolled out of the other side of the planet and scored 39 in his first year in the league. Like that, that is something they've lacked incredibly. It's glaring. We, we talk about their power play. Like They're almost as dangerous on the penalty there's kill. There's no as threat. No, none. They, and there's very few guys that have a shot that can beat a goalie at distance. Now you add that. So the, the negative view of this trade, and not to go there, would be that the whole, pa the whole package that you got in return, all of it's just a hope bet. Kuzmenko, hope bet, late, late first round pick, yeah. really kind of a coin flip. Bruskevich, intriguing prospect, but a lot of people believe the Canucks sold high 
and you know the success that he's had in Kitchener is probably not a really good indicator of what he'd pile up in the NHL. The fourth round pick, another lottery ticket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at least if you're going to go that route to me and take the hope bets, do it in quantity. Yeah, they've got lots of lottery tickets here. Yes. And they're not bad ones, right? Yeah. The other thing, too, and I had said to Ryan on the thing we did last night, that an executive had told me one time, when you go into how, how do you decide what you're going to trade? How do you decide what you want to get back? So as a group or individually, you sit down. Well, here's what we want. When someone gives you that, shake their hand. Don't get cute. Don't start, well, maybe, maybe I can take this to that team and maybe I can get an extra little pick here. It's just not worth it because then half the time those things go off the rails. Conroy set his price, and I dare say he got more here than probably what they thought they were well, going to get. It would be first player prospect. They got, he got what he wanted. He shook Rutherford and Alvin's hand. It's I, done. I think he got more than what the market, not meaning teams, but what fans thought he would get. Sure. Yeah. And part of that's because of what you mentioned, that this has been a down year for Lindholm. Yeah, the counting stats aren't pretty, but he's still a very, very good player. And and the truth is, to your point, there are, is no high-end talent for him to play with, and that's we've identified that that's the only way he can really pile up the counting stats. Yeah. So when you look at – this is another – so we talked about what Craig Conroy has done in, in identifying market inefficiencies. But the other part is – And I love and I think it's such a refreshing way to do business is if you are trying to win deals, and this is what gets in the way of all NHL general managers, is I don't, I got to present to the public that I won the deal. Mm -hmm. I I honestly, and this is, this is, there's no cliche in this. I think this trade is legitimately a win-win for both sides. I agree. I love it for Vancouver. Vancouver gets yeah. a real impact piece. No strings attached. They didn't have to give up their, their top prospect. In January, too. Right? There's there's a lot of time, and I don't think there will be. It is February but, today. but Well, whatever. Yeah. The deal's done in January. There's you got enough time to let him get comfortable. Maybe it doesn't work with Pet- with Pedersen. It's better with Miller. You have time to massage those things. For, for Taka to get more familiar with him as a person it's just it i see why vancouver does this i they weren't really and you get a splash at all-star what if those guys make him their first pick tonight in the draft yeah, yeah don't whatever care. don't care okay don't that's care right, I, well, get it. I mean we're being honest yeah i mean i'm sure <laughs> but, the 12 year olds will care but yeah. yeah he said i i set my price and i got it but the other thing was it's not that he shopped it but my understanding was he went to the other teams that had contacted him and said it's go time Present your best offer, or we'll yeah. see you later. It's going down because it's happening, and that's that's I think such a refreshing way to do business. And you had said too, we were when we start talking about all these players, and even go back to the summer when Toffoli was part of that group going into the draft. You got Toffoli and Zadorov and Hanif, all of these guys. Mm-hmm. How are you going to trade all of these guys? And you did you did Toffoli last summer, then you did Zadorov. You extend now you win do, right win win, and now you do this one. It just felt like it was going to be one of those things. It just wasn't going to be dominoes all at once. Yeah. That it was going to take some time. So now you're now you kind of tighten the focus. All right. Now what are you doing with Hannafin? He and did what it are you on his own Tanner? timeline. Yeah. That's the key. Is like remember all the all the bullets, all the shit was flying last year. And we were saying how are the Flames possibly going to sort all this drama out? And he just said, whoa, wait a second. I'm the manager. I've been in this situation before where I've been a player. I understand how teams can fall apart. They kept it together. They kept the wheels on. Mm-hmm. And it's been a disappointing year by any you know measurable metric. But now you've done it in a methodical way. The Toffoli deal is a clear win. Yeah. Yep. Clear Not win. Yeah. Moving Zadaroff and getting that drama out of his room – further enabled him to keep this team together and to you, then get to this point. I guess just because you brought it up, we're, we're hearing that maybe Zadorov isn't a great fit in that room. That Because uh, there was talk that was, it wasn't meshing well in the Calgary room. It was time to make that trade, to, as you just mentioned. Is, is there smoke to that fire that maybe Zadorov is, not that they're going to trade him, but it's not harmony in there right now with him? Well, I, I think there's the micro, which would be that, and then the macro, which is he's really unlikely to resign there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you tried it out and if it doesn't work, the problem with the Canucks moving him is that if they do, then they're going to have two pieces that they probably need to add they on the back end. Be, right? They right. I think they need one more defenseman because think about how this season has played out for Van. 
you've had stretches where you've had a couple guys banged up. Susie's been out. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you're dipping back into the, oh, this guy is a fringe NHL player, and that's that's not how Stanley Cup contenders are built. You got to have. You really need to be eight deep that yeah, you feel yeah. comfortable in. We said one other thing last night too, and to me, it's also a signal to Flames fans. I think there's confidence in Craig, like you said. He didn't Growing. rush out and just spring a bunch of – I don't know how I'm going to trade all these guys, just trade them. He was patient. He's still got some more assets to move. But it's also a signal, I think, that Flame fans can believe that, yeah, he's – they're going to be allowed to sell. They have a game plan. Right? It, There's yeah, a path it's the now, one that it? we've been praying for. Is ownership for? going to let them? Craig's. Yeah. This looks like Craig's going to be able to do it's things. The one his I've been way. telling you about since November or December. They knew since then. This is where we're going, mm -hmm. and I don't think they've had any trouble at all. My understanding, as much as Mary Edwards may be a pain in the ass, if you can present a coherent plan. He, he'll buy it. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's more of the retool versus just, like you said, they're a not pulling this thing down to the studs. Yeah. Right. And they, they, they can't. No. Not with Huberto contract, not Coleman, with Kadri, Backlund, not with Uyghur. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, there's too many good pros for and them to too good really of a goalie, frankly, right now, yes. and probably for the future. Is the goalie – should we be paying attention to Markstrom here over the next month? Or is, is that just too big a piece of business to do in season? I don't think it's too big of a piece of business to do. The Flames just got their biggest piece of business done. Right. It's, it's interrupt. Sorry. How much worse off are you right now, having moved Lindholm out? Like, they're still on the cut. I don't think they're making the playoffs, and I think they're going to make other moves. But I've been saying for a month now. You that love the sneaky get in BB8 yeah, seat. Yeah, battle. Well, because Mankos is going to be nine goal. Like he's going to be that much of a drop off from Lindholm's play right now. The problem is they don't centers. That's what I see. Like you, you if you like those two lines, the backline yeah. line and the Kadri line. Okay, so now where do you put Sharon Govich, Huberto, and Kuzmenko? Because none of those guys are centers. None of them profile as centers. Asking Zeri. If your power play alone, with Markstrom playing the way he is, if your power play alone actually, if you go up to 18, 19 percent. It's only You're the winning more games. two weeks, though. That's the really thing of it is, line. though, how many nights would you say the Lindholm line was their top line? Not often. You, so, uh, you know what I mean? I, yeah. If you viewed the Kadri line more often than not, that's your best line. And Backlund does it's the still heavy lifting, there. Yeah. And the Backlund line, it's... I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm not saying when you're when trading your this. third line center. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, I, I'm kind of with it's, you. It's kind of a collection of spare parts, though. It, it really is. is. Oh, it is. It's the island of misfit But you have the glue. The glue is your goaltending. Uh, that's like tell me who their third best center is right now because I like but you go may around as well the league and tell me who's St. Louis third best center well I mean it's it's not Cole Schwint Cole Schwint's playing in their AHL affiliate and that's the Flames third best center right now so my question is who can pivot to the middle and I, I think when you move 2D on top of your should have got rid of Rosie damn it I know I, yeah. I said that yeah. last night that whole thing if if the Dubé thing doesn't happen then they you don't right it's just it, then Greer gets hurt. And, and, but again, sorry, I, I put that out there as a as a hope and a prayer for the Flames fans that this isn't a complete. But that's not what they forward. want. I mean, look, compete your ass off, yeah. great. Yeah, sure. It's not about this year. But this this fan base is so smart. They've been clamoring this for years. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Because we saw it with Aginla and Bolmeister and Kiprasov, where you watch this team that wasn't good enough that consistently finished ninth to twelfth, and you don't get playoffs, you don't get high picks, and it's like. You just keep you slapping paint again. on it. Yeah. We used to call it peak sadness. You don't get high picks, and you don't have the thrill nor the revenue of a playoff run. And it is a fan base that says we can't be this mediocre, mucky middle anymore. Pick hey, a path. Go to the draft lottery odds on dailyfaceoff.com. We got them updated every morning. Flames are an eighth. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long-form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And, of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca. Appreciate you watching.